What are we talking about? So we're talking here about um, your diet, moving to a diet that's more vegetable based, plant based, and where we're eating a big salad every day. Delicious. Welcome back to the Longevity Deprocess channel. We will learn from Dr. Joel Foreman, a leading authority in nutritional medicine, renowned physician, and best-selling author who has revolutionized the way we think about health and longevity. Dr. Foreman is the creator of the Nutritarian Diet, a science-backed approach to eating that focuses on maximizing the nutrient density of every meal. His prescription for longevity isn't just about living longer, it's about living healthier, more vibrant lives free from chronic diseases. Dr. Foreman's Nutritarian Diet is all about packing your meals with the most nutrient-dense foods on the planet. But what does that look like in practice? In this video, we'll break down what a Nutritarian breakfast, lunch, and dinner look like, offering you a glimpse into how you can fuel your body for optimal health and sustained energy throughout the day. From plant-based protein sources to leafy greens and antioxidant-rich fruits, Dr. Foreman's approach ensures that every bite you take is loaded with life-enhancing nutrients. We'll also delve into the power of plant protein and why it's a cornerstone of the nutritarian diet. Dr. Foreman will explain how plant proteins not only support muscle health, but also contribute to weight loss, lower inflammation, and protect against disease. And speaking of weight loss, Dr. Foreman is known for his groundbreaking strategies that help people shed pounds naturally and sustainably. In this video, we'll explore some of his most powerful weight loss secret steps that go beyond fad diets and quick fixes to deliver lasting results. Whether you're new to the nutritarian lifestyle or looking to deepen your understanding of Dr. Foreman's approach, this video is packed with practical advice and insights that can transform your health and help you achieve your longevity goals. Oh, a quick favor. We'd greatly appreciate it if you can subscribe and like. This helps the YouTube algorithm recognize the value of our content and share it more widely. Join us as we dive into the Nutritarian Diet and discover how Dr. Foreman's prescription for health can lead to a longer, more vibrant life. Your prescription. At least one large salad every day, that's the prescription. And using between one and a half and three ounces of nuts and seeds based on caloric needs. Nuts and seeds becomes your major source of fat, not oil. And don't forget, and of course, beans are a major source of carbohydrates, especially if people have a metabolic hindrance to weight loss and they're overweight or have diabetes because beans have the most resistant starch and the most slowly digestible carbohydrates and are most glycemically favorable. And we want to have cooked greens every day. And of course, um, you know, foods that are either frozen and defrosted or blanched or cooked in a wok. We want to use water-based cooking methods so we're not blackening and darkening foods. And we're eating mushrooms and onions, mushrooms cooked, onions both cooked and raw every day, and some fresh fruits every day, particularly, um, and, and eating, of course, the lower sugar fruits and the foods with the high polyphenols, especially the darker fruit, darker things regularly, like black, like wild blueberries and blackberries and other types of low sugar fruits, pomegranates, dark cherries, you know, all types of delicious foods. So one of the most, um, we could say, significant findings of the last decade is that, in re which is now reproducible in many studies, of course, that is that, um, that people with a lower carbohydrate intake eating diets that are more animal product heavy, like paleo diets or keto diets, have the most early death. So even though a person may be controlling their weight or having their glucose temporarily look better on a more, you know, um, on a more higher animal product, higher protein diet, we know that low carbohydrates diet are linked to early death and more animal protein leads to more premature death. And you can't have, there's no such thing as a diet rich in animal protein that's going to be lifespan favorable. This has been well established to be um, 
to to know to um be pretty well accepted with large studies following people for decades looking at deaths that more animal protein means more death and more plant protein means more longer lifespan let me say that one more time so important for a plant-based community to understand this and that is these studies are showing and and corroborating each other and showing that more plant protein in the diet more broccoli right more nuts and seeds more beans more soybeans more more hemp seeds more high protein plant foods lead to longer life and more lower protein plant diets with more let's say potato or rice or fruit leads to shorter lifespan holy unrefillable prescriptions the doctor will now share with you another important finding what are your findings doctor so one of the most consistent and important findings is that we lose protein bioavailability and digestibility as we age and that moving to a plant-based or even a vegan diet a totally vegan diet the idea that we don't have to worry about protein and any combination of food gives us enough protein is not correct and that vegan diets that pay attention to protein where a person is eating seeds nuts beans and greens to maintain protein adequacy with aging definitively leads to longer lifespan than a diet higher in let's say carbohydrates or rice and of course brown rice is contaminated with arsenic the following study is also significant regarding nutrition the adventist health study too is such an important study which showed the same thing it showed that more animal protein made for more death and more plant protein laid for longer life but the adventist health study too is so important in the history of scientific studies is because they're studying a population that don't largely drink alcohol or eat a lot of junk food or they're that are uh, that are not generally obese they're looking at a relatively healthier population compared to the average american with a wide variety of of um intake from vegan to flexitarian to pescatarian to those eating more conventional amounts of animal product so they're able to really zone in and see the patterns of disease if you study just the average american or western european too many people are eating alike and there's not enough people in the categories comparatively of people eating more vegan or more small amounts of plants the adventist health study too because it's ongoing for decades and so many people in the cohort and looking at hard endpoints like actual death and cardiovascular death and and cancer death is such an important study which consistently shows this pattern of more plant protein especially of bean and green intake leading to longer life and even smaller amounts of animal protein um shortening life span even in lower amounts and also that more nuts and seeds in the diet lead for longer life and reducing nuts and seeds and mo- moving to a lower fat plant-based diet by excluding nuts and seeds leads to a almost a 40% increase in cardiovascular death dramatic increased death rate from both all cause mortality from both cancer and heart disease we know you need fat in a vegetable based meal to maximize the absorption of phytochemicals and fat stabilizes the heart against arrhythmia and the idea that a low fat diet or is someone with people some people actually say in the plant based community they say a low fat plant based diet as this stuff some benefit and they've been falsely in- educated misinformed to think that a diet lower in fat is somewhere favorable when it's not true because the seven day advantage health study too divided fat intake and nuts and seeds intake into five different quintiles and the lowest quintile of nut and seed consumption has much more death than the highest quintile of nut and seed consumption which is usually about 1 and 1/2 ounces a day or more so we're talking here about even an ounce a day was not in the highest quintile of nut and seed consumption so even an ounce a day is somewhat low so as we moderate calories we don't want to moderate calories by taking all the nuts and seeds out of our diet we want to might moderate calories by taking the oil out of our diet so we have room in our caloric pie to include nuts and seeds as a major source of fat 
every nutritional scientist in the world knows that walnuts is healthier than walnut oil and sesame seeds are healthier than sesame oil. Why would be people being so confused about putting oil on their food? And you can't put the oil on the nuts and seeds because then you're going to be over exceed your caloric intake. So what I'm saying here is that the data in the Ventus Health Study 2 has been corroborated by not one study or five studies or 10 studies, but, but 15. How many studies do you need to corroborate these long-term studies when all these scientists devoting their lives to this data and people look at all this data and they still are in denial that it's real because they see um, their, relig their nutritional guru and their nutritional viewpoints as a kind of religion that they can't, that's, that's fixated based on what they want to believe and they're not flexible to let the science dictate and direct them to what's the healthiest way to live for longevity. So what should we be eating? The protein! I need protein! So we should be eating more high protein plants. We're talking here lentils, beans, and soybeans in the form of edamame or dried soybeans that you make into chilies and soups and things. Incorporating plant foods that are high in protein are an important part, especially to maximize human health and longevity, especially as reducing animal products in the diet to favorable levels or even eliminating them completely because of the, um, because obviously better for the environment, but also because so much pollution, even if you're having small amounts. So we're talking here about using hemp seeds and, and broccoli and other green vegetables and seeds and nuts. Because when we do that and we incorporate these foods in our diet, we get, um, we get more protein adequacy. Now, Dr. Foreman will describe a suitable nutritarian breakfast. What's for breakfast? So remember, breakfast is somewhat lighter, where we have maybe some grain like quinoa or steel cut oat, or organic, of course. And we put those, you know, flax, chia, hemp, with berries or maybe some plant milk, maybe you have a glass of vegetable juice, maybe you're having some fruit with breakfast, maybe you're having a green smoothie, maybe you're having some um, intact sprouted bread with, with berries or with a glass of juice. Whatever your breakfast is, breakfast is relatively light. And now for lunch's effect on longevity. Hey, what's for lunch? We're trying to get hungry in time for lunch because I want to emphasize lunch is the most important meal of the day because I want people to eat a large salad, not a salad in like a seven inch soup bowl, but like a nine inch bowl, like a bigger serving bowl, larger than a normal soup bowl. A lot of times, like I recommend chopping the salad up with like a salad chopper and put in the onion and the scallion, you know, tomatoes and the greens, but always include something green cruciferous, like arugula or baby kale or bok choy or, you know, or um, some kind of watercress and, or maybe broccoli sprouts or some, in other words, in other words, include the cruciferous family, recognize that lunch is the most lifespan promoting meal of the day. It's the meal where you're going to spend your time chewing that salad and liquefying every mouthful in your mouth because you break open those cells with your teeth and the more you liquefy and break open those cells, the more you cause the chemical reaction to occur in the mouth. We are forming the beneficial compounds. Remember, myrosinase is the key enzyme in green cruciferous that's heat sensitive that you lose when you cook your broccoli and your kale to, mo to a large degree. And we want to eat some arugula, watercress, you know, baby kale, bok choy. And I'm, I'm such a bok choy nut. I'm such... I, I, I love bok choy because it grows in the garden so beautifully. It doesn't attract aphids and bugs like cabbage does or kale does. We have to clean it as much or even broccoli. It's so easy to grow. It's so bug resistant. It's so beautiful. And you can eat it in salads raw. You can juice it. You can put it into cook it, cooked vegetable dishes in a wok with mushrooms and water chestnuts and bamboo shoots and mushrooms and onions. And you can put the bok choy in there. Works better than cabbage. You can wok it with a great Thai sauce with lemongrass. And, you know, you can, in other words, there's so many great things you can do with bok choy. You can eat it in so many different ways, raw and cooked. It's so, and it grows so easily in your garden. You got crazy enough to, it's, and anyway, so I'm just a, a bok choy nut advocating people grow bok choy in their gardens. And then you have, you have this big salad for lunch. And then you have a dressing because you absorb 20 to 50 times as much phytochemicals when you have some nuts and seeds or some fat with that meal. 
which then enhances human lifespan radically, radical enhancement of human lifespan, or you could see radical inhibition of human lifespan by trying to cut the fat out of your diet and not eat seeds and nuts. So whether you're, so you're utilizing a dressing, maybe with some walnuts and sesame seeds, one of my favorite dressings is I take a peeled navel orange, the orange sesame dressing, and I blend it with some blood orange vinegar and a little bit of cashews and sesame seeds, unhold sesame seeds. Then I'll take some of those sesame seeds and I'll toast them very lightly in a pan. And I'll put some in with the dressing mixed in there, but I'll take some and sprinkle some on my salad. Maybe I'll put some kiwis or strawberries on the salad or pomegranate RLs on the sal salad too. And I'll make this delicious dressing. Um, but, but you see, I'm utilizing the seeds and nuts with vinegar and other substances, maybe tomato sauce with almonds and hemp seeds, you know, with, um, with black fig vinegar and some, and, and a fig or, you know, what I'm saying is I'm using vinegar and nuts and seeds, not oil and vinegar, but vinegar and nuts and seeds to make these creamy, delicious dressings. And we allocate, you know, about here at the reach at my retreat in San Diego, where pe overweight people come to get healthy and lose weight. We give them about a half an ounce of, uh, of nuts and seeds in the dressing at lunch. They pour on their salad <coughs> and a dip about half an ounce of nuts and seeds, either a sauce on their dinner, vegetables, or they're using their raw carrots and raw bok choy or raw pepper slices and raw carrot sticks, whatever, and, and snow pea pods. They're having those raw vegetables with a dip it before their major vegetable, their vegetable, cooked vegetable meal at night. So they're, and usually they're having a little bit of seeds in the morning. So they probably have between one and a quarter and one and a half ounces a day of nuts and seeds, even that they're overweight trying to lose weight. We don't take all the fat out of their diet and the average person loses about 20 pounds of fat the first month and about 15 pounds the second month and 10 pounds each month thereafter. They're losing 50 pounds of body weight in the three months they're here. They're do losing tons of weight. The way to lose weight is not to suck all the nuts and seeds out. Of course, we're not snacking on them, using it as an integral part of the meal. And then lunch may also include vegetable bean soup where you have mushrooms and beans cooked in the soup because you want to eat beans very well cooked and soft to maximize the digestibility and health giving properties of the beans for maximum absorption of all those polyphenols and, and incredibly and inositol pentacus phosphate. What I'm saying here is that we're enhancing the consumption and utilization of vegetables raw in the salad and using the beans and mushrooms cooked in the soup. So we have that together in this meal, this hearty meal. We have a big salad, a bowl of soup, and some fruit for dessert, which is lunch, your most important meal of the day. And now for dinner. What's for dinner? So dinner is earlier and a lighter meal. We were using raw vegetables to start, like... Um, you know, like I mentioned, carrot sticks and peppers. I don't have really enough appetite after having all the salad with the tomatoes and this and the um, maybe some cooked mushrooms in the salad. But maybe maybe a little avocado, maybe a dressing or a dip. But maybe they have a my salad. I had um, you know chopped bok choy or chopped cabbage, or maybe I had arugula with lettuces. And but but I really want to eat that big salad, and I can't have enough leftover. Um, appetite to eat a lot of ca carrot sticks and raw tikma and raw beets and snow pea pods and other raw solid vegetables and raw peppers. So I save those um, raw vegetables to dinner time. So I have raw vegetables to start out. So I have two servings of raw vegetables with a salad for lunch. And I start dinner with raw vegetables too, with a little dip. And then I have a cooked vegetable dish with dinner. My wok green, always something with a lot of greens and asparagus, string beans, cooked broccoli, cooked bok choy, cabbages. And I love growing asparagus. You gotta be, if you've got the access to a garden, growing asparagus is the most fun thing in the world because you set up your asparagus patch and it grows every year. You don't have to replant it. It keeps growing every year and it, it comes up. It's amazing. You cut down asparagus for tonight's dinner off the asparagus patch and you go steam it for eight minutes, most delicious fresh asparagus cooked that same day. And then the next day you come out there and there's a whole new asparagus popped up in the patch and you cut them down. It's just totally amazing that in one day, the asparagus can grow eight to 10 inches and you can keep picking asparagus from your garden almost every day, the whole for like months and months straight. When once you set up your garden with this asparagus bed. So yes, bok choy, asparagus, and of course, um, you're having this mixed vegetable dish 
with mushrooms and onion in it. You can have, you know, frozen green vegetables like frozen broccoli for it's the only time to cook. And you could have some dessert with frozen fruit. But remember, dinner is light. Calories at dinner count twice. If you're overweight looking to lose weight, keep your calories low at dinner because the calories you consume at dinner make it harder to lose weight compared to the calories you consumed earlier in the day. Don't forget, lunch is your main meal of the day. Here is the doctor's prescription for weight loss. Well, I wanted to lose some weight. And if you're looking to lose weight, we're filling up on these high volume foods like raw vegetables, including raw beets and carrots, which are high in fiber and make you feel satiated and aren't as the calories are not as absorbable as cooked beets and cooked carrots are. So raw makes you have lose weight more. And, and then of course, fresh fruits, especially lower sugar, fresh fruits, including citrus fruit and apples and kiwis and berries. Be careful with grapefruits. I do not recommend people consume grapefruits every day, especially in the summertime or warmer weather because grapefruits can sensitize the skin to, to sun damage. In other words, they make it more likely to get skin cancer when you, because the compounds in grapefruits can make your skin more sensitive to sun damage. So only eat grapefruits occasionally or in the winter time or when you're not out in the sun and don't make that the major source of your citrus fruit. And then of course, cook green vegetables. I'm saying Brussels sprouts, string beans, artichokes, asparagus, broccoli. My most favorite food in the world is artichokes. I love artichoke hearts, even with nothing on them, are great. And then use the non-green vegetables that are so low in calories, like mushrooms, eggplant, tomatoes, peppers, onions, and cauliflower, to fill in if you're overweight, so you're eating enough bulk, so you're not tempted to keep, eat more calories. Dr. Foreman will now share with us the most powerful weight loss secrets. What's the secret? So the most, most powerful weight loss secrets, because I don't know about you guys listening, because maybe you're not a traditional audience, but keep in mind that most of the audiences that I speak to and most people in America are overweight and still have too much fat on their body. So then we want to make them eat only at mealtimes, eat more fat loss promoting foods like I just mentioned, the fat loss promoting foods, the raw vegetables, the cooked greens, and the non-starchy vegetables that promote fat loss like tomatoes, eggplant, peppers, onions, and mushrooms, which have powerful anti-fat storage, anti-angiogenic effects. They say, no way, Jose, I'm not letting you put fat on your body. And then eat legumes like lentils and black beans and azuki beans as your primary carbohydrate source. So you're eating less quinoa, less um, potato, of course, more spaghetti squash, more lower, you, you know, some winter squash, all these things are fine with people with high caloric needs. But as you're modulating your calories lower, eat beans as your primary carbohydrate source, especially you have, if you're more overweight or more prone to buy diabetes, beans are a lower carbohydrate food. What makes beans so special? So don't forget, we can score foods on a hierarchical scale of quality and beans have the slow, most slowly digestible starches and they're also richer in protein and very lifespan promoting. Now the doctor will share more about why beans are longevity promoting. And we're saying here that the fiber and resistant starch in, G in beans has a strong effect on modulating the apostat in the hypothalamus. And of course, fuels the growth of favorable microbiome, producing more of those beneficial short chain fatty acids that, are, that butyrate and butyrate controls the, your appetite to a degree. So more beans and more of the in your diet is a dramatic effect on lowering your appetite effectively too. And of course, um, are their low glycemic can prevent the release of insulin. Finally, we come to S and G bombs. So these, so going back to the importance of eating nuts and seeds for a minute, I want a third to a half of your nut and seed intake to come from the high omega-3 nuts like hemp seeds, flax seeds, chia seeds, and walnuts. Walnuts, the king of all nuts, because it's so high in omega-3. So it's not that you can't eat pistachios and pecans and cashews and things like that. It's just that they should not be the major source of your um, nut or seed intake. If I'm putting a dressing or a dip or a, or a recipe that calls for cashews, I'm going to remove half the cashews and put half hemp seeds in with the cashews. 
song with them. Hemp seeds are so benignly flavored, you can put more hemp seeds in to increase the omega-3 ratio of any dressing or dip or sauce just by substituting more hemp and walnuts in place. So I'm going to make a, a banana ice cream. I'm going to take that frozen banana and whip it up with real vanilla bean powder and a little bit of hemp and walnut to give it that creamy mouthfeel. You know, so if I want to put some macadamia nuts in, I'll put a, maybe a couple of, just a little bit of macadamia nuts with some hemp or wall, with some hemp seeds in, and I'll make this incredibly delicious banana ice cream for dessert. And then I'm utilizing those higher protein nuts and seeds like hemp. Notice hemp seeds fits the category of both high omega and high protein. Sunflower seeds, pine nuts, especially when we're dealing with a lot of athletes, sometimes with the elderly, paying attention to protein adequacy is important from individual to individual because some individuals require more protein and some of the elderly even require more creatine, lest they have more muscle wasting or muscle cramping. So it was important to be, be, um, be monitoring people to make sure they achieve nutrient adequacy. Next, watch the Dr. Joel Foreman Club playlist for more information on the nutritarian diet. Thanks for watching Longevity Deprocessed. Hit like, share, and subscribe to stay updated on evidence-based longevity tips. Share your thoughts in the comments, your journey matters. Remember, small daily habits create big changes. Until next time, keep deprocessing for a healthier, longer future. Let's make this journey together.